Hey, super mamas, it's Dr. Joy here, and you are watching Delivering Joy MDTV. Welcome to Super Mama Sunday, where we have been talking about taking back your birth. This is part three of this series. And as you can see, I have prepared some props for you, girl. So we're gonna be talking about creating your birth space. And I've got some great tips for you today. So I hope that you keep watching. All right, super mamas. So as you know, We've been talking about taking back birth. And I opened up this series with just kind of some real transparency about how I've been on this journey to evaluate why I do what I do. And I would say that this journey has been for about the past five years or so, just kind of thinking about some of the things that I talk about with my patients, uh, with my girl gang, as I like to call them, with regard to the pregnancy, process, labor, birth, and the postpartum period. And, you know, I started thinking about this because I got involved um, on social media, really. And I started talking to a lot of uh, folks who were pregnant, um, who had birthed, and they were sharing their experiences. And I started realizing that a lot of people just really um, don't like <laughs> Uh, OB care providers. They were talking about how they had been talked down to, how they had not been listened to, how some of them had even been abused. And I was just like, wow, this is crazy. And I, I really started to evaluate some of the things that I do, um, started to look more closely at some of the things that I had seen and heard and that I was seeing and hearing on a daily basis. And, and I thought, wow, you know, some of the things that that these folks are saying are really kind of accurate. So maybe I need to really look a little bit more closely at myself. Um, I think that one of the things that has been uh, very valuable to me in my career is, is to be able to take a, a hard look at myself in the mirror and reevaluate what I'm doing and why and be able to change. And I think that's one thing that um, has served me so well throughout my lifetime is to be able to look myself in the mirror and say, hey, look, girl, you need to get your life. Um, so I am a big um, fan of self-evaluation because when you can see yourself clearly, then you can change anything. So the point of this series is really to kind of help us think about um, how we want to birth and how we want to go through our pregnancy and, and how we want to be prepared for the postpartum period. And by no means is this meant to be comprehensive or exclusive, but it is meant to give some food for thought and to help us begin to navigate this process because there's so much out there. There's so much knowledge, so much information, but I really want to just give you some bullet points for you to start thinking about these things because you know, a lot of times people don't even know what they don't know, you know, and so you can't really start this process until you begin to think about, wow, you know, I didn't, I never thought about that. So that food for thought gives you things to chew on. And when you start to chew on these things and start to research them, then you can really, um, really start to dig deep and think about how you want your pregnancy, your birth, um, your postpartum period to go. Well, today's video is going to focus on creating your birth space. And I think that this is very important because we know there's actually scientific evidence that has shown that anxiety, stress, and fear can make the birthing process a lot longer, a lot more painful, um, and a lot more drama, actually, than it really needs to be. So, I really encourage um, not only doing some research on uh, labor and the stages of labor, but also thinking about how you want your labor to, to go. If you're someone who is going to uh, be laboring at home for a while and then coming to a hospital, or if you're going to um, plan to labor at home and then birth at home, um, however you're planning to do that, uh, you want to put some thought into that. Um, and, and let me just say this, live life with intention. Okay, live life with intention. 
we cannot control everything and, and we are not in control of everything. We certainly can't control other people and we can't control life's situations and circumstances, but we can set an intention. And I think that we should do that whenever possible and know that even though we've set an intention, things may change. But I think that when we live life on purpose and when we set an intention, life sometimes um, bends or people say the universe bends to our intentions. So think about what, how you want to see things go. And people talk all the time, these gurus talk all the time about visualization and envisioning yourself doing things in a certain way. And I think that there is some merit to that. So uh, start to do that. So start to en envision yourself laboring. Um, start to envision, env mm, Lord can't talk. Start to envision yourself going through labor and the birthing process and how you want that to go. How did you always dream that that would go? How did you dream that your space would be, that your support would be? How did you dream that you would be able to um, endure that process because a lot of people uh, really have no clue they're thinking okay it's going to be like tv or the movies so it's really important to start to think about that so uh, i can tell you um, that a lot of folks are not prepared for what labor is truly like so it's, it's it's something that is very different from what you might see on tv where you know it, it within a 30 minute sitcom episode someone goes into labor their water breaks and then the baby's there in minute 28 that's not what actually happens labor can take hours and usually uh, for most people it kind of has a slower onset maybe contractions coming every 10 minutes and then every eight minutes and then every six minutes and then every five minutes, you know, and everybody's labor pattern is a little different. You know, um, you can have different labor patterns with different pregnancies. So very much a mixed bag. So I think that, you know, it's very important to note that your expectations cannot be set based on anyone else's pregnancy or anyone else's labor or anyone else's birth or anyone else's postpartum period. Um, I think a lot of times people um, receive fear from other people's stories. They receive fear from their friends and their family members and what other people went through. Don't try not to do that if you can help it uh, because other people's experiences are not yours. So don't pick those up and carry them around with you. Uh, you can certainly hear those or read those, but don't take them on as your own because that's not yours. And it may certainly be completely opposite from yours. Your mom may have had a very traumatic experience during your birth, but that does not mean that that's what you're gonna experience when you go um, to give birth to your baby. So don't, um, don't carry those around, don't internalize those experiences of other people that you hear or see or read. And if you know that you are someone who tends to internalize those or you're a really empathetic person or you're someone who um, becomes e easily anxious, then it's okay to use your words. I say this to uh, mamas all the time. Tell people, listen, that sort of story makes me very anxious. Can you please just only share positive things with me? Okay, because I don't, that when you share that with me, it really makes me feel anxious. It makes me worry. I don't wanna feel that fear. I don't wanna take on that fear. So it's okay to, to do that. So start to create positive spaces around you, even during your pregnancy. So if people are, you know, fear mongering, saying, oh, you know, my friend went in and she got cut and had to do all this stuff and, and almost died and this and that and the other. If that's not what you need to hear, be okay with saying, that's not really what I need to hear right now. What positive stories do you have for me? Be okay with saying that, creating those positive spaces. If people are stressing you out, um, not being supportive, uh, talking um, negatively about you or your decisions or your, um, your pregnancy, be okay with saying, hey, you know, the, the negative talk is really not helping me right now. Can we talk about something positive or remove yourself from the situation? 
So that's, that's one way to start creating space for yourself during your pregnancy. You wanna surround yourself with joy, you wanna surround yourself with positivity, you wanna surround yourself with support, you wanna surround yourself with um, accurate knowledge, you wanna surround yourself with people who are um, very genuine throughout your pregnancy. In other words, girl, you want to protect your peace. So let's get to the birthing space. Depending on where you intend to be for your birthing space, and that could be, you know, in a hospital, in a birthing center. Some folks may choose um, to birth at home, and we talked a little bit about that last week uh, in the video that I've linked up here. And if you're not watching this on YouTube, I've also linked it down in the description box. Uh, but um, you know, choosing where to birth, I believe, is a is a woman's choice um, or a birthing person's choice. And they're right so that's that's up to you but setting up your space and i pulled out these props that i have in my office um so that i can share them with you because these are things that i use to make my space more comfortable uh, every day and i think these are all very appropriate things for a birthday space so true story about me y'all and this is just really funny is that i think i came out of my mother's uterus knowing how to be comfortable um, wherever I am and I'm showing you this picture now of this bed that I used to make on the couch when I was a resident and residency is like your first job when you first graduate from medical school and it's grueling anybody who is um, a doctor that you know, ask them to tell you about their residency. Residency is like, I don't know, it's walking through the valley of the shadows of death. <laughs> um, but it's really busy, you get paid very little, so you're broke, you work all the time, uh, you, you, you real fine because you barely eat and you run around all the time. So like, that was probably like the finest I ever been in my life. I was real skinny, you know, uh, had a great shape because I ran up the stairs at Grady Hospital all the time. But um, this was what I did in residency to be to self-soothe myself. I made this bed. They call it a baker bed. Uh, and I had, you know, eye covers because the lights never went off at the hospital. And I had this little, this is back when you had real iPods and you had to plug it into a, a, a speaker. So I would play like spa music and I would sleep maybe an hour or two in a 24 hour shift. But I would, the first thing I would do when I would come into the residence lounge is clean everything thoroughly and put some gloves on, clean everything. And I would make this bed. And that to me was my center that was home. I would put my things there and I might not even sit down the whole 24 hours, but I would know that that space was there and it was safe. So I'll get there an hour early to make sure everything was clean and I had that space. And that was like a centered space for me. So when we come into the birthing space to prepare for birth, I recommend that you create a centered space for you. And inside that room, wherever you, you are, if it's a hospital or birthing center, create a centered space. And here are some of my favorite things. And these are things that um, would all be appropriate uh, where most of my mamas birth. And you can certainly check with the facility where you will be birthing to see if they're appropriate there. But certainly at the hospital where um, I birth, these things are all okay. So first, um, I am a big fan of essential oils and I love pure essential oils. So this is a diffuser and I diffuse in my office and people love it. One, because it smells good, but it also um, really um, can be a big mood booster. So these are some essential oils that you always will find when you come into our space. This is Elevation. This is the Joyful Blend from doTERRA. I'm a huge doTERRA nut. If you watch my videos, you probably see my doTERRA box uh, peeking around the corner back there. Um, but I do Elevation Joyful Blend. I love this Breathe. It's a respiratory blend. It's got peppermint in it and eucalyptus. It's good for clearing the sinuses. 
I do the Serenity blend, um, which is the Restful blend, which has got a lot of lavender in it. So these are things that, that I do and the diffuser really is just, it's so calming. And so I use it pretty much every single day at work. It helps keep me calm. So if you're somebody that needs something to um, help keep you calm, it's a, a really great tool. So, and most hospitals are totally okay with it. Plugs right into the wall. So um, you just need a diffuser and water. Next is a calming scent. And this is something I found on Amazon that I love and and we love scents. And this is um, a natural fragrance. It's like an actual for real rose. And I don't even, I mean, this is not a sponsored video or anything, but if you want to sponsor me, I'm good. But I have these in my office and we have them all around. And it's a natural fragrance by Madame Antoinette. But it's an actual rose that has rose fragrance. So if you have a fragrance that you love that smells really good to you, um, being mindful or practicing mindfulness during contractions or times when you feel anxious can be very helpful. So sometimes just thinking about what you can see, smell, taste, feel can be very, very helpful. That smells so good. So calming yourself, things that are uh, going to help you self-soothe during the labor process can be very helpful. So scents are also are very good. Positive affirmations are another big thing that can be so helpful during labor and the birthing process. Setting these up where you can see them. This is my block of affirmations and Bible verses. This one says, don't be afraid, just believe. Um, you know, pray to the Lord. Be still and know that I am God with God all things are possible so if you have affirmations they don't have to necessarily be um, Bible verses but whatever it is that really encourages you that gives you strength you know certainly putting these things up if you have a playlist if you have music that you really love if you have meditations that you listen to these are things that will not only um, strengthen you mentally, but they also just kind of remind you about what, why you're doing this, that you are strong, that you are capable, that you are more than a conqueror. So you want to encourage yourself and you want things too that your support people can repeat to you, that they can remind you of. The best labor support person I ever saw was this dad. Man, this guy was off the chain. He he even had a t-shirt with it. And they gave me permission to share this photo. This guy was awesome. He stayed right in his wife's ear and he would just repeat this mantra to her. You are so strong. You are so brave. You are so capable. And he stayed with her the entire time, coaching her holding her hand, um, helping her get into different pushing positions. And she pushed like a champion. She had an unmedicated um, uh, labor and she pushed for about two hours. Ended up needing to have a C-section, but she really gave it her best shot. And she was okay with that. She had a large baby but baby came out healthy she came out healthy and and they just did a fantastic job so i think that um you know having a really strong support system is very important and having them really encourage you not only with their words but with their nearness and being there to um to to be a physical support like to allow you to lean on them to really speak life into your process and to to encourage you with the words that you choose and so knowing what words encourage you is very important so music words of encouragement words spoken to you words that you can read words that you can hear um, physical touch can all be super helpful during your birthing process another totally appropriate birthing space modification is battery operated candles so i keep these in my office because we can't have you know fire in here obviously 
um, and you don't want to have fire in your hospital or birthing facility because we often have oxygen and even folks who may be birthing at home many times your birth uh, attendant your midwife may have oxygen with them so oxygen tanks and open fire do not mix so don't blow up your um, home or your birth center or your hospital by having open flames please so be mindful of that so battery operated candles can look just like real candles and you can use those in the birthing space um, i love these and i keep uh, AA batteries so that i can change them out when necessary but you can also use led lights if you want soft lighting around the room i even have had um, mamas who come in and bring their little battery operated led light strings and you know put them up you can put them up on the wall with tiki tack or things that won't destroy the paint or whatever and that's a, a really nice way of creating the, the mood the scene you want i mean i had a mom a couple months ago her birthday space was a whole mood she had all kinds of stuff going on so you know do what you can within the um the within the rules for that particular facility obviously you want to be respectful to other folks um, when it comes to music and lighting and all that kind of stuff if there are other people in that facility but um but what you need to do to make things um feel like home for you is totally okay i tell folks you know there's a pillow you need a blanket you need something that you need to make that space feel like home bring it i've had uh dads bring their whole tv and 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 they'll set it up because maybe if you're birthing in a hospital they don't have netflix or things that you want to make it feel like home you're going to be there maybe you're um, a higher risk birth and you need to be induced and you're going to be there for several days so if there's things that you need to make it feel like home and it's not against the policy or the rules do the things that you need to make your birth feel special to make your birth feel safe for you uh, because a lot of times there are things that you could have that are not against the rules um, at all that that will just make things feel so much better for you ask about your hospital's policy when it comes to eating during labor so Here's the thing, the reason why women weren't allowed to eat during labor in hospitals is that if you needed an emergency cesarean delivery and you had to be put under general anesthesia, meaning put to sleep, you could potentially throw up and that uh, vomit could be sucked down your lungs. So that's called aspiration, it's a condition called aspiration. If you suck that food down your lungs, you could potentially develop pneumonia and get really sick. Well, guess how much that has actually happened? Almost never. You have a better chance of winning the lottery than aspirating, okay? So when we really, I did a, a literature search uh, on this and we really looked at the data, my anesthesiologist and I. So at my hospital where I was working at the time, we did an intensive search of all the academic literature and so we decided to change our policy and we allowed laboring uh, mamas to eat up until they got an epidural and the reason we stopped once they got an epidural is because occasionally the epidural levels can go too high so that means they get numb above the level of the diaphragm meaning they can't feel when they're breathing and that can be dangerous for aspiration as well um, even though they're not being put to sleep with general anesthesia so after they have an epidural place then we go to clear liquids meaning they can have broth sprite ginger ale jello that sort of stuff so as long as they don't have an epidural we um i, I let my mamas eat regular food so I think that has really changed the game in terms of their comfort level, because what we know is that a mama who has no calories, who's dehydrated, is not really going to be an effective pusher. And if you cannot push your baby effectively, then you may not be able to effectively birth your baby. So eating is something that you probably need to do, right? So ask about your hospital's policy. I know that this has kind of been slow to catch on, but we know that the evidence supports that aspiration is really quite rare for pregnant women. And the other thing is that in pregnancy, your digestion is so slow 
that the stomach is almost never empty when you're pregnant anyway. So even though you may not have eaten for hours, your risk of aspiration is still higher when you're pregnant anyway. So I think we have to be um, judicious about allowing pregnant women to eat during labor, especially when their labor may be for really long periods of time. So it's definitely a situation where you have to weigh the risks versus the benefits. Now for women who have higher risks during their labor, like if you have high blood pressure or you have uncontrolled diabetes or there are other complications that may be going on, your risk of having an emergency cesarean delivery may be higher. So it's important to take those higher risk first on a case by case basis when it comes to consuming regular food. Speaking of food, you may want to consider having warm beverages, right? Because remember those menstrual cramps? If you have bad menstrual cramps, warm beverages can be very helpful in terms of pain control. So I love hot teas. Caffeine free, of course, because the caffeine in hot black teas or coffees can speed up your heart rate and the baby's heart rate and can cause the baby's heart rate tracing or your heart rate to look abnormal when it's monitored during labor. Speaking of heart rates, you may also wanna ask about your hospital's fetal heart rate monitoring policies. So in the birthing space, some hospitals monitor babies continuously and some hospitals have policies on intermittent fetal monitoring. And that means that you can get up and move around in between monitorings. If you have a relatively low risk labor and birth, um, then you may be able to get up and move around some, maybe get in the shower and allow hot water to run on your back or run on your belly, be able to dance around, move around, get on the birthing ball, um, be able to walk down the hallway some. So these may be options if you have a lower risk pregnancy and you're expected to have a lower risk labor and birth. Even for higher risk pregnancies and folks who are expected to have a higher risk labor, there may be some intermittent monitoring options for you as well. So be very vocal about asking about these things during your pregnancy at your OB care visits and asking in advance prior to going into your birthing space because you want to be armed with as much information as possible so that you can go ahead and start setting some intentions for your birth. And last but not least, Set the intention for who is going to be present in your birth. As COVID-19 starts to recede, visitors are being allowed in the birthing space again in higher numbers. Hopefully this Delta variant is going to dry up and die, God willing. Um, but now in most hospitals, one or two people are being allowed back into the birthing space. Choose these folks wisely, choose them in advance, have the difficult conversations in advance. If you know that your mother-in-law gets on your last reserve nerve, do not invite her into your birthing space, okay? Talk to your partner in advance and say, hey, I just want it to be me and you. Or if you know that you really want your mom in there instead of his mom, you know, make those decisions early. Talk about it together because, you know, your birthing space needs to be as peaceful as possible. And I think that sometimes we shy away from difficult conversations, but I think that you as the birthing person and your partner um, as the other parent need to make some tough decisions. And if you can't decide together on who is gonna be in that birthing space, then maybe it should, should just be the two of you versus um you know causing hurt feelings between the two of you because your bond needs to be strong you're about to bring a whole other human into the world so if he's mad because your mom is coming and his mom is not then maybe they should just be present in a zoom space um which i've seen a lot of lately because of COVID 19 pandemic well they can be present in a virtual space and nobody's real energy is in that in that room with you uh, because Zoom, you can set the phone down, put the iPad down, 
close the laptop if somebody's getting out of order. It's a little bit more difficult when they're actually present in the room. However, I have um, had a practice of setting up safety words with my patients. So when someone looks at me and says, Dr. Baker, you know, I really would like a purple Fanta. That means clear the room, you know, and I don't have any problems because I don't got to eat Thanksgiving dinner with your mother-in-law. And I'll say, you know what? I need everyone to step out and sit for, um, for dad. Uh, I need to have a conversation. And, and when I do that, pretty much everybody's going to step out. So I think that what we need to do is we need to be okay with having some difficult conversations. If you're not comfortable um, saying that, hey, I just need a break from everybody. If things are getting hot in the room, people are talking a little bit too much, you just need for everyone to clear out and you don't feel comfortable saying that, it's okay to whisper to your nurse or to your OB care provider, hey, I just need you know, some peace. I need everybody to get out. It's okay to do that. You know, talk to your support people in advance and say, hey, um, I need, when I need a break, I need for everybody to listen to me and give me a break. Or I need for, when it's time for me to have an epidural and I'm not able to eat, I need for people not to bring their, you know, KFC up in my room. These are things that you need to think about in advance because in that moment, you don't want all the stress. You don't want all the noise, all the extra stuff going on, or maybe you do. And if that's your preference, if you want 30 people in the room and you want it to be noisy and you want people braiding hair and having, you know, playing spades in the corner, if you if that's your thing, that's okay. But if that's what's happening in your space and that's not what you want to be happening in your space and believe it or not, yes, it does happen because I have seen it with my very own eyes. I have had to literally step over people to get to, to patients in, in hospitals. Um, you know, it does happen. If that's not what you really want happening in your space, be okay with saying that. And if you're not okay with saying that, be okay with talking to your OB care team and having us do that for you to clear out that space. But whatever you do, don't let allow yourself and your birth to, to become one that is not peaceful. Be okay with getting your peace back, however you need to do that. So I hope today's video was helpful for you. I hope that you learned something about creating the space that you need to have peace, to have joy, to be able to anticipate the birth of your baby and to be um, excited about that, to be able to do that in safety, to feel secure about that. So if you found this video helpful, give me a thumbs up. I would love for you to share about your birthing experience or some of the things that you're planning to do during your labor and birth. Tell me where you're gonna birth and tell me what things you're gonna bring with you when you come to the birthing space. I would love to hear about that in the comments. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss a single Super Mama Sunday episode and I'll catch you next Sunday. Peace.